This is Coffee Country and Cody. Cody. Hey, welcome to it. It's the Acuff House Studio, our studio home that includes a museum you can visit when you tour the Opry. You can come see our museum, interactive too, behind the airwaves. People love to play that 15-question trivia contest. They huh? do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they get really upset when they get, oh, ooh, ooh, and then you go to the next one. That's Charlie Maddows. I'm Billy Boy. Annie Nye is our studio director, and uh, she went to like a murder mystery a thing last night with some friends as we get ready for Halloween. Like an interactive clue. Is that what it is? Yes, something like that. And mm-hmm. uh, and Jeff Roberts mm-hmm. did not because he has a, what, two-year-old at home? Oh, no, he's going to be four soon. Oh, is he He's really old? close to four. Well, yeah, his birthday is in April, I think, with Jackson. So yeah, oh, he's uh, uh, at least three and a half. Jeff is in master control oh, upstairs. That three and a half is good prime Halloween mm-hmm. age because not only do they like getting dressed up, but... They like getting all sugared up and then they don't go to bed till like midnight and then wake up and oh Listen, man, that's good stuff right there. You do not have to have Halloween for that to happen. All you have to do is be a little boy who's like two years old named Isaiah. Uh huh. That's my grandson. Right. And have a sister who's seven who plays softball. Okay. And you go to the, as my son Levi used to call it when he was little, the confession stand. Oh, very Catholic. You go to the Very con- Catholic. I like <laughs> Go that. to the yeah. confession stand four or five times Mm -hmm. and it's just like halloween but it's two nights a week all fall oh i love that huh can i come yeah i'd like i'd like to go to the confession stand yeah you had to bring your own chair oh i could stand you could stand yeah and they have bleachers but they fill up quickly okay we we bring our own chairs (laughs) we we spot your chair but we don't have enough fewer splinters uh, in the chair than the bleachers (laughs) what metal bleachers oh okay yeah we've upgraded (laughs) <laughs> so, welcome to Coffee Country and Cody. I saw this note and it made me smile thinking about being in Mr. A Cup's living room mm-hmm. these days with the show. 1939, how would you like to have been a fly on the wall when William Smith Bill Monroe auditioned for the Grand Ole Opry at our WSM Radio Studios? This was National Life and Accident Insurance Company downtown. We were 7th and Union. That sign actually hangs in the museum that I referenced mm-hmm. a little bit ago just outside our window here. He performed, he did three songs. Oh, I'm gonna do three songs right now, just like this. He did uh, Foggy Mountaintop, mm-hmm. did uh, Mule Skinner Blues, okay. and Fire on the Mountain. Oh, wow. Uh, he passed the audition, made his debut five days later. Oh, that's a quick turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. So that from our incredible WSM mm-hmm. archive and history of 99 years from this date, the 23rd of October, 1939. That new look and new sound that is the Oak Ridge Boys these days as we welcome Richard Sturman and Dwayne Allen to Coffee Woo! Country and Cody. All right. And look at Dwayne. Oh. Hey, there's a man who just won the Battle of I-65, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Talking oh, about a man. It was man. A, it was a parking lot out there. <laughs> 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 and of course, you heard William Lee Golden and the new voice, Ben James. Yes. And before Ben joined you guys, I knew him as a bluegrass soloist. That's right. And then had seen him and worked with him at the Opry with Daly and Vincent. He jumped That's in right. and, right. and yeah. do some things. So let's go ahead and start there with the, the newest member uh, slipping in there where Joe Bonzel stood for so many years. You know, Ben was, uh, uh, he was a solo artist. He worked with Daly and Vincent. That's where we first heard him. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, we were working with Daly and Vincent over in Wheeling, West Virginia. And when we work with Daly and Vincent, we usually all wind up on the stage working together. It's like an old country music gang bang. <laughs> and, uh, so they came out on the stage with us, and uh, Joe handed Ben the microphone on the second verse of Elvira. And there was a transition on the stage of the Wheeling Jamboree, and we all kind of looked at each other and Ben just took over the stage and we remembered that. So was Joe sick at the time? Not really, but he was already on a stool. Okay. All right. And, uh, yes, he was sick at the time. Joe had been sick for the past four years and it was a transition of him wearing a brace and, and one thing at a time, but Joe never lost his voice. In fact, he he kept his full voice all the way to the very last Christmas show. He was a trooper all the way to the very last show. And the very last show, Joe told us 
uh, as we helped him off stage and put him in his wheelchair, he said, I'm done, boys. Mm. And the very next morning, he called Ben James. Oh, wow. And he said, Ben, I'm done. Get on your singing britches. <laughs> and there was not really any other choice. Uh, we had prayed for divine guidance in picking someone who could fill the dates that we had in the book. We felt obligated to fill the dates that we had in the book already. Right. Because we had all previously agreed that we would hang it up when Joe decided he would quit singing. But later on, we decided, well, the rest of us are not really through singing yet. And when Ben came, he was such a good fit. Joe was his hero. He knew that. everything Joe had ever recorded. And that brings us, Richard, to something you said when you got here this yeah. morning. That's yeah. what this farewell tour is ongoing. That's <laughs> well, right. Well, <laughs> well, you know, we are on a farewell tour. The only thing about this farewell tour is that we do not know when <laughs> it's going to when end. When the great farewell is going <laughs> to end. <laughs> you, know, you know, we looked at all the groups that have had farewell tours. I think the Eagles are on their third farewell tour. Well, Alabama and, famously did it for the longest. That's right. Nitty and, Gritty Dirt Band's coming to the Ryman in November. They're right. on their farewell tour. <laughs> and uh, this farewell tour for the Eagles, they're calling it the Long Farewell Tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they started it in 23, and they're not ending it until the end of 25. So this, so. for you, started with 50 years, and now are you into your 51st? Yeah, that's right. The 51st mm -hmm. year. Wow. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I've been here 58 and a half years. So the, the 50 year uh, signified the four of us with Joe. Mm -hmm. And Richard yeah. has actually now been here 52, 52 years. years yes. So in yeah. what order did you come? William Lee was first? William Lee was first. And there was a period of time that he, he went with his boys for about nine years. Mm -hmm. And I came second. Richard came third and Joe came last. And where were you before you came to the Oak Ridge? I, was, I, I sang with the prophets for a year. I had to go to the Army first. And when I got out of the Army, I came directly with the Oak Ridge Boys. Where'd you do wow. boot camp? I beg your pardon? Boot camp. Oh, I didn't have to go. They found a heart condition in oh. me. They had to reclassify me. I joined the Oak Ridge Boys the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and was no longer property of Uncle well, Sam. Well, it's a different kind of boot camp well, than the Oak Ridge Boys. They offered me a job, so, and I said, I can't take that job. I've got to go to the Army. And I'm 1A, and I passed two physicals. But once I got into the Army, and they did some... Uh, they did some intensive examinations of me. They said, everybody here is going to Fort Polk, Louisiana. Ooh. Then you're going directly to Vietnam. And if, if you go to Vietnam and your heart acts up, you could own the Army and we can't afford you. <laughs> so I that? said, well, what does that mean? I thought they might give me a desk job or something, you know. <laughs> they said, well, we're never going to call you again. We're going to have to reclassify you. So... I called my banker, and he said, go buy you a car. I said, I've got to get out of Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> I said, I think I've got a job. It's been offered, but I don't know if they fulfilled it, but I've got to get to Nashville. He said, well, go write a counter check, buy a car you want, and when it comes through, I'll cover it. When you get your job, call me, and we'll work out some payments. Try that at your local bank today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try that today. See, I Richard had it easier. Richard just goes to Elvis and said, Elvis, <laughs> I need a car. i got to get to Nashville. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Elvis, you give me a recommendation yeah. for a job. <laughs> we'll be right That's back. That's all get a that, true story. Get yeah. that back story and talk more about this brand-new album called Mama's Boys. I think this is the fifth one now with Dave Cobb, their noted producer. Recorded at Blackbird and Historic Studio A Music Row here in Nashville. If you're just joining us and you're saying to yourself, I just heard the Oak Ridge Boys and I thought I heard them duetting with Willie Nelson. That's exactly <laughs> what you heard from their brand new album, which comes out on Friday. Mama's Boys. Willie Nelson wrote it and sings on it. 
with opera stars and country music hall of famers, the Oak Ridge Boys. Well, I'm excited to say they'll be back. A lot of tour dates, obviously, on the never-ending farewell. But back on the Opry stage, Friday, November the 29th, Wednesday, December 4th. You can get tickets at Opry.com. And the last time I worked with you guys at the Opry was just a couple of months ago. I I did something I never do. After I introduced you, I went out front of house. I said, I want to experience the Oak Ridge Boys the way every fan is experiencing the Oak Ridge Boys. And there is such joy when you guys are on the stage. And I know everyone has been touched with sadness and loss over the last few months, but that, that stage is such a happy place for everybody. And it? it's, it, they say music is healing, and the, the joy emanated from all of you guys. It has been a tragic year for the Oak Ridge yeah. Boys. I know that families have periods of time uh, in their, their families where they go through a lot of tragedies. So uh, it's, we're not exempt from that either. Mm-hmm. This has been a year that it, it has been our year. Well, for people who don't know, Rusty passed away. That's yeah. William Lee's son. That's right. And then your father-in-law That's passed correct, away. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Nora Lee Allen, your wife passed My away. My wife. And, and then Joe, and of then course. Joe, yeah. Every member of the Oak Ridge Boys, all four of us, have been, uh, we have each faced a tragedy in our immediate life. And, and Charlie, you noticed something that I, 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 must, I must say. The Oak Ridge Boys have always told people, we, we hope you feel better when you leave than you did when you came in. Mm-hmm. And the stage for us, our music, is positive it's healing and what we didn't realize is how much healing it was for us yeah. it works both ways right? And yeah. yes mm-hmm. it, it starts with us really mm-hmm. and it has been our salvation during this trying time for the Oak Ridge Boys that's what you felt mm-hmm. that's what we feel mm-hmm. we feel that every night but this year it has been what has kept us going and kept us uh, in our game. Uh, God has, has provided us a wonderful career, but the music has helped heal our soul at times when we're really down. Well, I hope somebody's felt some healing with this conversation right now this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you all much. for getting up early and coming in and sharing the new album. And a full album comes out on Friday. Already a few things have been released well, it's a special night at the Grand Ole Opry where that went down live last mm-hmm. night with Drew and Vince together, green light. Uh, it's the Opry Goes Pink, our annual uh, recognition of Susan G. Coleman and the work they do for breast cancer research and awareness. Uh, Opry star Ashley McBride is going to flip the switch this year to make the Opry Barn pink. T. Graham Brown, Scott Stapp of Creed. It's an Opry debut for him as a solo artist. Tasha Layton will be there. Victoria Shaw and John Party. And Tasha's from the... Uh, mm-hmm contemporary Christian world. Tanya Tucker was scheduled to be there. She's been put on vocal rest. Fans at the show tonight. What, well, what world is Tanya from? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let's see. There was a John Prine, John Prine <laughs> line that comes to mind, Charlie. Oh, my stars. Linda's gone to Mars. And we can't get her back. <laughs> Insert Tanya. <laughs> Uh, but you can attend the uh, post-show circle room acoustic performance and Q&A, little interview, sit down, Kelly Sutton, make it very conversational with T. Graham Brown. And that is tonight, post-show opera. Uh, Chase Stokes is making his on-screen country music debut. 31-year-old Outer Bank star appears in the music video for his girlfriend Kelsey Ballerini's new song, First Rodeo. Yeah. Kelsey Ballerini, again, Chase Stokes, her co-star there in the video that you saw. Uh, Entertainment Tonight said <laughs> in an interview, he said, I didn't have to think twice about this. Uh, the song was written about their love story specifically. Uh, the music video for First Rodeo premiered last Wednesday ahead of this, uh, was this Friday, two, two days, the release of her new album, Patterns, which she will do a special album release show in New York at Madison Square Garden. And speaking of new music, New album drops just in time for the holidays. It's not a Christmas album for the holidays from Dolly Parton and family. It's Smoky Mountain DNA, Family, Faith and Fables, November 15th.
Not Bad is the name of that song. That is, uh, did you say a cousin? Shelly Rena. Is, yeah, Dolly's cousin. Okay, Shelly Rena. Again, Ooh. Family, Faith, and Fables comes out mid-November and Not Bad. It's what you just heard. Somewhere Winona is saying, I want to sing on this record. This is my sound, people. <laughs> right? It really is. That's yeah. a good point. <laughs> and uh, next year when y'all see me, you won't recognize me. Words from Jelly Roll says he's lost 100 pounds since he started his health journey. And uh, gives so much of the credit to his health and fitness coach. Tickets are on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. for Jelly's Bridgestone Arena Show here in Nashville. That's just the Tuesday before Thanksgiving Thursday, November the 26th. Ernest and Alexandra Kay will open that show. More Coffee, Country, and Cody is on WSM. Sitting here with Terry McBride, Ray Herndon, and Billy Thomas McBride and the ride in the house. Brand new music, live music, I might add. And Terry, you said you were relieved when you knew you were coming this morning <laughs> and wouldn't have to play live at 9 o'clock. Oh, my gosh. Why didn't we record this live record years ago? I didn't know. What we <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we love doing it. For you guys, we would do it anytime you yeah. ask us. But we talked about it. We have the live record we're promoting. So we're off the hook this morning. But it's the first time. I mean, we've done those back in the day that... 6 a.m. Uh, you oh, know. the radio tour that oh, kicks off your career. Oh, Bill, you know what that's like. And so, and even some TV back in the day, you know, the Good Morning Americas or whatever, you know, that's an early show for lilting three part harmony. <laughs> so. <laughs> You can only hope for the best, depending on where we were the night before. You some know? days it lilts better than oh others. Oh, my right? gosh. The look on my face sometimes when I'm trying to go for the big note, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it can be scary. But, that's why uh, he wears the glasses. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You don't want to see <laughs> the fear. I hide the fear. That's, that's what so, I'm doing. So this is the 35th anniversary years for you guys. Uh, how could that right? even be possible? Yeah. But, yes. Wow. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Still at it. Still tickled to be in the way, as they say. And, uh Finally, a live record after all these years. Was Kenny Vaughn a part of this outfit at any point? No, time? towards the end when I was touring, he he played with me for a while. Okay, Kenny, yeah, I had a. And couple. when I say cousin Kenny of the fabulous relatives yeah. of Marty, we Stone. all love, awesome. We yeah. all love his playing, of course, and still do. But yeah, we have Ray does all the heavy lifting on the guitar and always has, and of course Billy's been the drummer We're, the thing about this band is it's the original members which never happens you know these days you go right. see whatever band you think you're seeing it's maybe the bus driver from the original band is the only original member you know or you <laughs> uh, you know or each guy's got his own bus or that's not the case here where we started this back in 89 and we're still riding down the road in the suburban together we still have fun still this is this is the second the second incarnation of uh, our, our second reunion Kind of, yeah, right? it is. So right. we, uh -huh. after we, we, we did a little run, but yeah. right in 2002, we did the Amarillo Sky record, and uh, at that time, radio we couldn't find a place on radio, and we were on dual tone records, so they couldn't find a spot for us at that point. Radio was still trying to, you know, figure out what was going on there. So we kind of put that on hiatus, and 20 years later. Here we are again, yeah. and we're uh, well rested. We decided while well, we're still alive and able to do this, we should we should continue. And here we are. And Billy, you've been out with Vince Gill. Uh, yes, in the, yes, I have. Uh, in the yeah. beginning, I think he was responsible for you making the move. Oh, to town. absolutely! One yeah. of the first people I met when I moved to town, yeah. and he was so kind and so generous. And I went on to to do a bunch of other things beside him backed up a bunch of people but this thing came along tony brown brought it together and i knew it was a band that i could be a part of and be honestly you know go out there and pre present stuff as best as possible plus these guys turned me on to a lot of country music and some southern blues too along with him so really what cool. was the spark for tony that that lit the fire as you look back on um, the history he, of the trio he got to, he knew us all through different um, yeah, probably. media, but whatever you want to say. Well, uh, he well, Ray he, had just done the La Love It exactly. record. Ray was on those early La Love It. Tony was producing that. He'd been using Billy on those Vince records. Billy played the, the drums on the Hillbilly Rock album, with Marty. You know, mm -hmm. and so, so I was Tony, getting to know him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Tony's a producer. I mean, he 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 is a detailed person. Even putting a dinner party together, he wants the right people. And so he had an idea for this band. He had signed me to the label, but he said, "You know, you're a band guy." We need a band, you know. He said, we have Desert Rose, but that's coming to an end. 
and we need a band, so think about it. And he goes, and I've got a couple guys in mind, and it just happened to be Ray and Billy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he brought us together. That's how we met through Tony Brown. He so, went, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, no. I'm just going to say one more thing. I, I hadn't mm -hmm. laid eyes on Ray Herndon until we were at SIR downtown way back when. And it was love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, yeah. it was and, one and of those. So people know SIR is a performance rehearsal hall. Exactly That's right. right. That's yeah. right. That's Everybody, how we got to know each other. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, when I, I, so when, when these guys didn't know me, I've got a little a prankster sense of humor. I may, I, I really pride myself in this is that we, I got there early before them and set up my drums and I set them completely out front. Yeah. At the front <laughs> of the stage. Up by the lead vocal. Dead center. <laughs> and I said, hey guys, when they walked in. Oh, I yeah, love we that. don't even know Billy, but we're like, already we got to break his heart. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they go back there. They go back in the back. He was taking yeah. a page out of the Cactus Mosier Highway 101. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. yeah. Yeah. So, Cactus, it's a good place. So when, yeah. Tony, when Tony put the band together originally, he had no idea that he knew we all sang, he knew all this, but had no idea we would have the brotherly harmony that we do. And that just happened right off the bat. As soon as we started singing together, yeah. we're like, wow. Yeah, it we was just surprised. a very... Yeah. brotherly harmony it just felt right and he yeah, recognized that he came in like uh, halfway through our rehearsal and said you guys have a deal if you want one wow. so and that was we it, it was a, we went from meeting each other rehearsing to a revolving door of these people they were bringing through you know lawyers managers agents <laughs> so they would we'd play our same three little song <laughs> next <laughs> and we did that remember exactly all right. day long That's next right. they bring yeah. a, a guy brought a six pack in at one point you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys i'm here to be your agent you know, well we like you already you know? well, so and you guys kind of had a win-win right because it's magic on stage but it sure helps off stage if you get along well oh. too it's not yeah. a requirement. Oh, I mean, I know, but but it sure, but it sure does help, though, right? Oh, we really oh. don't do that. We've got three separate buses. We've got it all. You, you know, I just no. saw the ZZ Top documentary. Oh my gosh! Said, Billy Gibbons said the only reason, or maybe it was Dusty, was commenting. He said the only reason we have made it this far was from the beginning. We all had separate buses. Yeah, they, oh my they, wow. that we do not that's have. That's a fact. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't need it. No, we so. we don't even have the bus anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we better get along. It's tight quarters. We have three scooter, three the, separate scooters in the suburban. Yeah, we're yeah, we're still having fun. We we know all the dirt on each other, so that's fun. We get to bring that up from time to time. And, I always yeah. say we go out there and play a little bit of music and and laugh a lot. Yeah. Well, the yeah. next gig will be at Chiefs in a couple of days. On yes, Friday, you're going to be will. at Chiefs downtown yeah. on Broadway but we're going to feature a song you'll remember this from the catalog going out of my mind and this was live at Handle Bar J in Scottsdale this is Coffee Country and Cody and more with McBride and the Ride in studio this morning live their new EP live at Handle Bar J comes out on Friday and they're also playing Chiefs here in Nashville on Friday and we'll run other tour dates that are coming up but the history, Ray, with your family and Handle Bar J's. I love the website that reads, built in the early 1960s by Wild Bill Bird, the original name was Wild Bill's. At that time, there were only a few Western style saloons in North Scottsdale. <laughs> Since then, all the others have come and gone. In the 60s, anything north of Lincoln Boulevard, tumbleweeds, rattlesnakes, and cowboys. Pretty much. <laughs> Wild Bill's was a dance hall and honky tonk that had live music, chicken wire in front of the stage. <laughs> And one of the regular performers was an unknown Waylon Jennings. Mm -hmm. That's right. What a rich history. Mm -hmm. Tell How us more. That? Isn't that something? Well, yeah, Waylon, when he uh, left Lubbock, Texas, after playing with uh, Buddy Holly, he moved out to Arizona. And uh, Handlebar, like it says, was one of the only places out there. And he got a res residency play in there for Wild Bill. I hear Wild Bill hired and fired him multiple times <laughs> over the, that stint he played there. And also uh, Mac, the singing bartender, who was a friend of Waylon's. Mm. And uh, so r a rich history there. And um, Jesse Coulter and I became, have become really good friends over the years. And we did a couple tribute shows to Waylon at Handlebar in 2003 in 2004, where we had everybody from Tony Joe White to Hank Jr., um, <laughs> Andy Griggs, Jeffrey Steele, and uh, we kicked off Sirius Radio's Outlaw Channel from Handlebar in 2004. But anyway, uh, yeah, just a rich history. A lot of celebrities have come in and out of Handlebar J uh, over the years, and this will be our 50th 
coming up 20, 25, 50 years of my family owning it. I own it now because my mom passed away. But, you know, it's... Uh, how many do you a, hold? What's that? How many do you hold for, like, for an album yeah, taping? How many? Were, how many how like many 150 in there yeah. we had. What's the, it's a small room. Yeah, it's room, a small it, room and a big patio. Yeah, so yeah. 150 it's an open inside. air. It's very cool. It's intimate. So when, you know, the guys have played there over the years. Yeah, we've played every decade. We do our so. Yeah. We, we go back and play the anniversary yeah. party and... So we went back there in February and we recorded the two nights that we were playing there just to a sold out show, both sold out shows. And uh, we started listening back to this stuff and we were like, we need to release this as a live record. We've never done that before. It sounded so good. So here we are. Uh, but uh, Handlebar is still going strong. A Thanks colorful for. character from Wild Bill's <laughs> days was Mac the singing bartender, yep. a good friend of Waylon's. Mac told the story of one night at the bar after a few cocktails while Bill was demonstrating the art of twirling a gun. <laughs> he dropped the gun. The evidence remains in the inch-deep hole, the bullet hole, in the post <laughs> on the dance hall floor. Oh, no. <laughs> People come go. to see that hole, believe it or not. <laughs> Where's the bullet hole? No <laughs> one was injured in the filming of this. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite a history. It's it's Now it's, you know, it's surrounded by metropolis now handlebar j is the only little place that's been there all these years um surrounded by it, urban sprawl so almost like uh, the station in in the gulch here in Pretty nashville yes. yeah. it's the Very one surviving like original thing no, you're yeah. right about that yeah. Yeah. yeah so what do you remember about the first gig you did after you were, you, you were telling us the backstory on the band and Tony Brown signed you, you got a record out. Wow. Do you remember first the first gig? place you would have played? Did well, you know, was it Ohio? Well, I tell you, one of the very first dates we did was this guy down in Texas uh, who had cowboys. Steve remember? Albeck. Steve oh. Albeck was a fan of ours. He had yeah. this enormous honky-tonk. It was uh, previously a massive grocery store or something, you know, big strip. You, you know, back in the day, we were talking about denim and diamonds and all these Honky Tonks, Dance Across Texas. They were everywhere in the 90s. Or as like, Tom T. said uh, in the homecoming, uh, no, Dad, we don't call them beer joints. <laughs> Nightclubs are the Night places club. that I play. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so sophisticated. Yeah. Back in, but, but that was one of the very first. And i tell you, it was early because I had to get the van together in Austin because these guys were flying in. I was still living in Austin. That's how early it was. Mm -hmm. And the guy oh, that I was renting this van from, he didn't like using these vans, so I had to tell him, why not tell him we were professional golfers? We were, we were, yeah, I'm sorry. We were about to tear this van up with gear. You know? Oh, I love that. So, yeah, I told him we were professional golfers. He's like, all right, well, don't, don't take these seats out. Oh, my God, it was horrible. <laughs> so we drive up there. Steve books us for a Friday night. He loves us so much. Yeah. And he's like, where are you guys tomorrow night? We were off on a Saturday, but we were playing a Sunday. He goes, I'll book you tomorrow night and pay you even more money if you'll do tomorrow night. So we went, oh, boy. Long. And then that continued to be one of our dates forever. He was yeah. such a supporter and such a great guy. But that, that had to be one of the early, very sure. first dates. Yeah. Probably, uh, yeah. yeah. So the first record had a couple of hits that did well. It did Can't count on, Can I Count on You and, and Same Old Star. Right. But how much does Sacred Ground change everything? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. Was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had to wait on that, too, didn't we? We had to wait. For sacred ground we were well, stuck and the crazy yeah. irony yeah. is that you and ronnie have written so many hits for brooks and dunn but that's a kick song that you guys end up having a yeah. massive well, hit I, on i tried right? to return the favor yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, <laughs> yeah kicks and vernon rust on that song and yeah, i remember I, uh, renee bell sent that to me on a cassette i was still living in texas and when i put it into my little camaro at the time I, oh, it just hit me so hard, like a song. She said, this is something that sounds like you would have written. And I went, oh, I wish I had, because it's just perfect for us. And I could hear those harmonies before we even rehearsed and practiced the song. But yeah, it took off like no other song we had. That was the summer of 92. It was so exciting. We talk about this during the show, but it, it was working its way up. You know, we're watching the charts. I've always been a chart watcher for good or bad. Uh, I grew up on Billboard magazine with my dad, but... Uh, so it got top 10, top five. And that summer of 92, we were stuck at two behind achy, breaky heart. Oh, right here. No. <laughs> yeah, for like two. Of all the luck. Oh, what song? What other song? <laughs> of oh. all the song, like 14 million copies. <laughs> Somehow it burned out, and we snuck in and got around. But oh my goodness! But yeah, that was a big that was a big year. And for then us the humbling experience when we were out near Orange County playing a, a date when that song went. Yeah, number we're number one. one in the country. Billboard said tonight, 
country band. <laughs> yeah. Country yeah. band? Yeah, that was yeah. us. Yeah. That was us. So you're telling me yeah. we're in the big time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, how do you say Come you made it Come through the kitchen, boys. I, did, I didn't watch the, the, the trades like he did to oh. find out how this thing would go up. I looked at the, the Vernon Russ, the other writer. His hair would get taller and taller. <laughs> and it so near I, the so top. I knew we, we had a bullet. There was a bullet right there. Oh, That's how I so. met Kix at the number one party. I met him that day. It was a how good, about a good that? way to meet a guy. He was pretty okay. pretty happy that day, so it was a lot of fun. McBride and the Ride in studio this morning. We've got Terry McBride, Billy Thomas, Ray Herndon. Thank you for getting oh, up, coming in sure. and Thank sharing the new work. It comes out on Friday. The full EP does live at Handel Bar J and Scottsdale. And we're going to the movie soundtrack of the eight seconds oh, movie. Yeah. The Lane Frost story that starred Luke Perry. Yes. Uh, you'll be happy to know that Brooks and Dunn, Vince Gill, and McBride and the Ride all play themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking at the movie credits. Bill, we like to say we're in the movie eight seconds for about six seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so look for us, but look quick. And this is the 30th anniversary that of that is. movie in your 35th year. There you go. McBride <laughs> and the Ride. This is. More Coffee, Country, and Cody is on WSM. Woo, four by, four by you. That was a pick of the week for me back like early July I chose that. And green light, baby, got the green light inspired by his wife, Ellie Holcomb, and her undying support of his crazy dreams in the music business. Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors, my pick of the week this week, featuring Vince Gill. Tonight, the Opry goes pink, and we're going to feature Ashley McBride. She's going to flip the switch and light the lights, and the Opry barn will go pink. And you'll get to see and hear T. Graham Brown, Scott Stapp. That's uh, Scott Stapp of Creed. He's making his Opry debut as an artist, solo artist. Uh, Tasha Layton is there, Victoria Shaw and John Party. And our Kelly Sutton, who's out this morning, will be back tonight. And she's going to host a sit-down performance and interview with T. Graham Brown after the show. Are they doing that in the circle room or in A? I think they are doing that in the circle room. Okay. And uh, folks who pick up a copy of uh, From Memphis to Muscle Shoals will get to be a part of that event. And when the you say uh, pick up a copy, you mean uh, retail, retail price. Yeah, don't lift it from the opera <laughs> shop. You, you don't get to go in. <laughs> no, I just thing. picked it up. Yeah, so. And, and $5 from every ticket sold tonight goes to benefit the Susan G. Coleman Foundation. So it's a, it's a great win-win for everybody. Yes, breast cancer awareness and research. Susan G. Coleman. Chase Stokes making his on-screen country music debut. No stranger to the screen. Outer Banks, you may know him. The 31-year-old, of course, is the boyfriend to Kelsey Ballerini, <laughs> grand old Opry star. And also their love story, the subject of First Rodeo. Now, when you see the clip, I'm going to say they did not spend a whole lot on his wardrobe. Yeah, that is Kelsey. A music video for First Rodeo premiered last Wednesday, just ahead of October 25th. Friday this week, the release of the full album, Patterns, special release show. She's doing that at Madison Square Garden in New York. Concert for Carolina streams on Veeps this Saturday, 4 Central. That's uh, 5 o'clock in the East. Tickets to the live stream are available now at veeps.com. Concert for Carolina. Got that? All right. And for those of us that are watching and listening and were affected, it is free to use. 